Hello, this is Kevin Curran with Rising Tide Biology. In this video, I am going to attempt to describe how RNA vaccines work. This has been a hot topic this week. We just saw wonderful data um, come out from the Pfizer BioNTech team. They, uh, they have a vaccine candidate. It was found to be more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19 in their clinical trial participants. That, that was better than I expected, to be honest. So uh, hopefully that will continue with, as they get more phase three data going into December uh, 2020, and hopefully no safety issues emerge. So this is an RNA vaccine. This is a completely new vaccine technology. The RNA platform is completely new. Most people have no idea how this works. We're all sort of catching up. It's fascinating cell biology. And so I'm going to just sort of quickly walk us through this. So this is different than previous vaccines. We are injecting a small piece of RNA into the uh, muscle region, like an intramuscular injection. Um, now, what is this RNA that's being injected? Well, it's the RNA that, in, that encodes for a protein, um, this viral protein called the spike protein that naturally exists on the outside of this novel coronavirus. So what we're trying to do is feed a little piece of the virus to our body so that um, our immune system can recognize it and create immunological memory. So they sort of store that the memory of this virus in in our in our in our memory banks back in our lymph nodes, um, and then when, if and when the actual coronavirus enters our body, maybe six months later, we actually get in, in, infected. Our immune system, using our B cells and our T cells, they will uh, instantly recognize. Um, the, the virus because they've already sort of grabbed onto and and recognize this this spike protein that sits on the outside of it. So they sort of grab it, they know what it is, and they immediately destroy it with the, with these different te techniques. So how does this work? How do how how does the vaccine itself works? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the RNA sequence for the spike protein. Okay, so. It's just a little strand of nucleic acids. They've been modified, so they don't um, create immune rejection. And, and we are, the, the companies, both Moderna and Pfizer, they surround these, this, this RNA sequence for the viral spike protein. They surround it in a lipid nanoparticle. This allows it to punch into our cells because what we need to do is we need to get this inside our cells. It's got to deliver into our cells and our cells are going to then convert that RNA sequence, which is just, it's just, you know, genetic sequence, nucleic acids. It's going to convert it into that three-dimensional protein, which is the, the spike protein, which, which, which naturally sits on the outside of the virus. So that, that whole translation process uh, happens inside our cells. So the, this little lipid nanoparticle um, will punch the, the uh, RNA into our cells. What cells? Our muscle cells, as well as certain immune cells called antigen-presenting cells, if that rings a bell, dendritic cells. These cells will take it up and then they will um, read off that RNA code, you know, by doc utilizing the cell's ribosomes. They'll then create this spike protein. They're, we, our own cells, create the coronavirus spike protein in our cells. We then process it with Golgi apparatus, proteasomes, a lot of kind of cellular machinery, and then we present it on the outside of our cells. So we sort of hold it up um, to to the to to all these other cells in our body. So that's using what's called this MHC complex. It grabs onto chunks of this viral spike protein, puts it on the outside of our cells muscle cells, the APC cells, and now these specialized other cells in our immune system, our B cells and T cells, can come in with their own receptor proteins on the outside of their cells and grab onto that. They can, they can, they can 
grab onto that like a lock and key and when and and once they bind it they they will the, those cells the b and t cells will then become activated they will um they will register the shape of that spike protein and they will maintain that memory the memory of that spike protein um, and that's i'm not going to go into the details there but that they become activated and they are now primed to attack it the t-cells will rain down chemicals on on and any subsequent cells or or viruses that that have that spike protein um, and the b cells will create antibodies that will physically attach to the spike protein and that will trigger a series of events so that our immune system will kill off the um uh, kill off the virus so that's once that's happened we've created immunological memory by activating our b and t cells they 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 recognize and um that that chunk of of viral protein now which we've sort of um, artificially created and provided to our immune system and now when the real thing happens maybe a year down the road you know you go out you go to a bar you go to a concert um and you you end up becoming infected coronavirus enters your body your b and t cells already as soon as they recognize that little chunk of spike protein they go to town and they kill off the actual uh, virus before it can hurt your body okay so that's that's an rna vaccine it's complete it's been completely experimental um and now we're we're you know it is it's no longer experimental we're now we're now testing this in humans and the data is looking good uh, this this early phase three readout and so you know fingers crossed we um w we'd like to see that 90 percent effective uh number you know continue and then we're going to start distributing this and um ideally start building up herd immunity through vaccination all right i will keep you posted